Okay, everybody. Let me get this volume adjusted. One final time. I'm operating remotely, but we should be okay. Everything should be okay. If the, uh, I can see you guys. I continue to refresh this screen here. If the sound gets choppy, let me know. You guys let me know that. Oh, thanks for waiting. You know, uh, people are losing hope these days. And you guys are so blessed to have a Messiah. Do you guys know there are people out there, they don't have a Messiah. They have no Savior, right? They believe in the world paradigm, and, and these are smart people with very uh, critical critical jobs for the USA, but they have no, they have nothing outside of their jobs. And because of that, there are lots of people losing hope. In fact, there are some very important people, I guess that the average person would say that they're uh, important. So much hope has been lost. Suicide attempts are going up among the elite. Imagine that. That means that you have quite a few people that are, that are bound to undergo some psychological reviews. They're going to be medicated. It's becoming hopeless for them. Right? They see no way to, they see no way out of what they're in. They know an issue is coming, a situation, a crisis point is coming, uh, both for the country, right? Uh, we, we know what's happening to the former president. What you may not know, what you may not know is what's at stake for everybody else. See, because through direct language, and, and believe me, it, it would be nice if it weren't like this, but it is. If, uh, if, if certain groups get into power, right, they know there's going to be much retaliation. Right? If they don't get in power, um, they know there's going to be retaliation. Either way, the results of what we're about to endure, the USA, is not going to be accepted uh, by the vast majority of folks who are opposed to um, certain views, period. And so some people have pledged, even today, to go ahead and begin their coalition of forces or a group of people against the status quo. Things are falling apart at the seams internally. And I'm sure that you guys heard uh, one of the um, officials in Washington declare a civil war. Did you guys hear that? You should have heard that with your own ears. Amongst a civil war amongst Democrats and Republicans. Did you all hear that? Now, no, that's pretty strong language. They did. They declared it. This individual declared it. Some others um, and constituents declared the same thing. So I hope you guys are highly aware of what's happening here. Now we're at the point where physically people are starting to break down. Mentally, they're beginning to uh, break down. Right? And it, uh, you guys who are believers... You can, this is an opportunity for you, as it is for me. And because uh, there are positions you can take that only the Messiah can instruct you in, right? You can actually be a help to a great many who need it in this uh, delicate time, very delicate time. We live in a time of change, and it's going to be very difficult for people to accept that change. Change does not come easy, right? So I'm going to spend a little time uh, going over a focal point, something, something I'm, I'm hearing from people. And uh, it may not be what the outcome is. I have a belief of what the outcome will be. Right? But there are a lot of people who are hoping in something. I, I just... It bears no witness in me. No witness at all. No witness. In fact, um, a lot of people are going to be shocked, surprised. Uh, they probably will not see a delusion 
of magnitude coming. So you can't see a delusion. Right? If it were just a deception, so be it. But that's not what we're facing. It's not. We're facing a delusion. And if it's a delusion, that's a different word. It means something different. Right? It is very difficult for a person to ever uh, get out of a delusion. A person becomes delusional, correct? Being deceived, being tricked, right? being, being uh, you know, uh, you're being fooled into believing something is one thing. A delusion, that's an absolute acceptance of reality. Like right now. Like right now. Right now you live in a world. And most people wake up with a confidence, thinking that somehow mankind has forged a path that can be trusted. How do we know this? Because not one person wakes up. Not yet. They do not question. Right? Everything mankind has provided them. They don't do it. They don't do it. How many of you guys woke up and you were extremely worried about government policy or about your daily life or is it wrong to have employment in this nation? Uh-oh, right? Or is it wrong not to have employment? How many of you guys question everything that you do or you're not sure about it? See, the truth is we take no thought of it. In fact, whatever things are normal, how we're raised, you just go about your day doing whatever you like, Nobody will ever question that. If you sit back and think about it, though, if you really think about it, about what God accepts and what he does not, can man define what God accepts? No, God must define it. Can man define what God rejects? No, God must define it. But something is different here. Have you guys noticed that mankind defines everything? Mankind has made himself an interpreter of what and who God is, what God expects, what he declares. Hmm? You see anything wrong with that? Our countries are drifting away from sound morals to the point where Christians argue the point of the secular people in the world. There, there, there are many Christians who are totally complacent with what's happening right now, with how their life is. In fact, most people say, well, let them do what they want so long as I have peace. Not realizing, right? Not realizing. All of us are given an opportunity to make a difference somewhere. Are we in somewhat of a delusion. So in order for us to understand this, we have to revisit scripture. I'm going to ask you guys a question. You guys give me the answer. Does the devil deceive people in the end days? Does he? Anybody? Do you guys think the devil's going to deceive people? Do you guys believe in the great deception, wherever that came from? Where did that come from? Somebody help me out. Where did that term, the great deception, come from? I've never read that. I've only heard that from people speaking it. I've never read that anywhere in the Word of God. Because what I read in the Word of God was that God would send them a strong delusion, that they would believe a lie. I never read of a great deception. See, because the Word said, a man is drawn away and tempted of his own lust. So in truth, a person can never be deceived unless the person trying to deceive them has something they want. What you have to ask yourself is this. Does the devil have anything you want? Because if you can be deceived, you will be deceived. Satan cannot deceive a person who has no, uh, a person of whom Satan has no investment in. That person cannot be deceived. That person cannot be lured into anything. 
They can't be made to do anything in the darkness. We are drawn away and tempted of our own lusts. In other words, if you like something that the devil is offering, you can be tempted to get it from anybody, right? Say, for example, I'm going to use a slight example. Say, for example, you love pizza. And down a specific street, there are a bunch of pizza parlors. But it's against everything for anybody to eat pizza. But you like pizza. Now, if you walk down that street, what's going to happen? You can be tempted into eating a pizza. Why? Because you like pizza. Anything you like, anything you like, you can be tempted into getting. Anything, doesn't matter what it is, anything you like. So how does one become fortified against those type temptations? A purging. A purging. That's how. How do you become purged? You consider what your father said and accept it finally. Not fighting or going around, but accept it. Didn't matter if you're doing something or not. Accept what the Father says. You guys want to be free from what you're stuck on, right? Don't dodge the Father when you have a, you know, you're doing something. Right? Don't do that. Somebody mentioned drugs and alcohol. Hear this one. Anybody who wants to be free from drugs and alcohol, right? Don't say to yourself, well, let me get off the alcohol and drugs, and then I'll go, you know, fully with the Father. Don't say, Lord, heal me from the alcohol and drugs so I can serve you. That's making a deal. You know that, right? Don't do it that way. I give you, I know that people have told people this time and time again, right? But, but to be truthful, to be truthful, you don't hear of that many breakthroughs concerning people who are on drugs and drink alcohol too much. You don't hear of those breakthroughs. Do you know why? Because they continue to do it. And nobody knows about it. Right? So how do you get free from something like that? You come exactly as you are. Lock, stock, and barrel. And you simply say, Lord, I have a problem. But in my heart, I want to serve you. Not fit to do it, but I want to serve you. That's what you do. That's your beginning. See that? Not get cleaned up before you go. Just go. That's called honesty. That's called being open. That's opening up your arms and saying, here I am, Lord. Everything. Here I am. Everything. With everything wrong, with everything messed up, here I am. But I'm coming to you. Because I want to serve you. Now, you already know, when you come to the Lord like that, and you are sincere, do you really think he's going to leave you the way you came to him? Do you see the difference? And how many people are saying, well, I can't go to the Lord completely yet. I have to get cleaned up first. Right? What's going to happen to that person who's broken and goes to the Lord? And they say, here I am. From my experience in reading, Every single last person that came to the Lord like that, they have been cleaned up. The Lord cleaned them up. The Lord caused their iniquity to pass from them. The Lord did things to them. Why? Because they did, they came to him in truth. Hear me on, please hear me on this. Can any of us go to the Messiah in a lie? Can we? Any of us. Can we go to the Messiah in a lie? Can we, can we clean ourselves up, wash off the dirt? What the truth is, right? We washed the dirt off, but we desire the dirt. Are we going to him like that? No, that's an outward appearance. That's not going to work. There are people out there that want to be free. Right before I got on the air, right? Somebody attempted to commit suicide. Right before I got on air. Bad time. But it happened. Right? You know what the person, you know what, when people do that, they feel, 
hopeless. They feel like there is no future. Why? Because their life was totally within the framework of humanity, of these systems in the world. If you really thought that's all there is, see, the truth is, lots of people say they believe, but if you take away everything that they have, who are they then? Are they still a believer? I will submit to you right now that a lot of people say they believe because of what they have, because of the comfort they have. You take all that away. Who are they? Who are they? We got to get it right. Not one of us should be moved because of those external conditions to the point where we would say, I'm going to take my own life because it no longer matters. Because that's a big lie. People have embedded themselves in this world so much, and this really is a tragedy of not knowing who Christ is. Because when you don't know who Christ is, you have nothing else. There is no future if you don't make it in the world of men, right? In your profession. Uh -uh. There's life beyond life. There's life right now, there's freedom right now. No matter how dark it gets, your moment has come. Your moment. My moment. And if I can do it, you guys can do it. Don't look at me like somehow I'm a David, right? No, I'm not a David. I'm not. I'm just a person who will walk on certain convictions. That's all. I have a saying, give me crack corn. You guys know that song, Jimmy Crack Corn, and I don't care. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the world implies. I do care about what the Lord cares about. I can see why the Lord cares so much for humanity that he would give us life. That means he cares right now. Now, we're the ones. We are the ones who get so steeped in these worldly kingdoms and then when they kick us out of their club, we feel there's nothing left, don't we? A lot of that is going to happen in 2024. It's already happening. A lot more will happen. An entire restructuring of the government is soon to take place. Are you guys truly ready for that? People are going to turn on each other big time. You watch and see. You watch and see. And the comforts a person would usually have not going to be there. Those who belong to the kingdom of God are those who truly love the Lord Jesus. And those who love the Lord Jesus, they truly love their fellow man. You cannot love the Lord Jesus and hate your brother. The Bible says the love of God is not in you. And do you know why? Because Christ gave his life for the very ones you don't like. He did. God is withholding his judgment of every soul that's living on this earth. He is. And if he does not judge them, if he still loves them, who are we to not love what the Father loves? How can we be children of the Lord, and we hate what the Lord loves. And it work out too well, does it? I'll tell you something. I do not like what they do. I don't like what a lot of people do. I don't. But I have a strong desire that people be free from the oppressive forces that cause them to go in specific directions, deceitful voices that keep them in bondage, I looked at a person, I'm not going to mention the name, all of you know who the person is. I looked at a person close to the breaking point today. I looked in the eyes of a person close to a breaking point. I mean a breaking point. It is taking a toll. 
and instead of bolstering a person with falsehoods, I can't help but to wonder who's actually praying. Who's actually praying? People want what they want, right? They do. They want what they want. They pray for what they want. But who's praying for the individual? Someone has said, who know who it is? All of you guys know. You know who it is. You just may not put that picture. He's this, everybody knows who this person is. And this person is close to a breaking point. What that breaking point is going to produce is not going to be pretty. You know what happens to a person when they have been pushed too far? One of two things will happen. Either the person will totally collapse, or that person will become vicious. Satan often pushes a person to become vicious. So they do things they normally would not do. Causes a type of paranoia. You guys care about the USA in this country. You guys in Germany, you care about Germany. You guys in France, you care about France. You guys in your respective countries, do you care about the place you live in? Do you care about the place your father had you put in? Because if you do, don't put up with any status quo. But always seek from your father to see what you can do genuinely to make a difference. Everything God does has a purpose. And guess what? He made you. Some of you have no idea what your purpose is. You don't. You're trying to make a purpose. You need not do that. No, you're made for a a good purpose. The coffins are coming. Unexpected departures. And it's going to hit close to home for some folks. And when it happens, whatever we failed to pray for, it simply won't be covered. Darkness is growing. It's not coming. Darkness has been here. It's seizing power. And according to the word of God, the study we have been in in Revelation, darkness is going to be empowered. You know when it says in Revelation he will overcome the saints the most high? I know a lot of people don't like reading that, right? In another passage it says he'll wear out the saints the most high. What wears you out the most? What wears you out the most? Not you, the flesh, right? But you, the spirit. What wears you out the most? Isn't it when Satan has his way? When people fall to darkness? Isn't that the biggest uh, thing that wears you out? When the will of God is seemingly not done in the world. When a holy or godly result is not the result. Even in your own life, Right? When you're living your life and things are not working out, you know what I'm talking about, a mishap here, a mishap here, and it looks like darkness. Many people say they're tired right now because they've been praying for 50 years. Many have been tithing, right? And things have happened. If we face the truth, we know that to be true. And they say they're tired. Time because they keep doing it, but the results are not there. Truth be told, they keep doing something and the results are not there. I'll be the first to tell you, I'm, I'm not living. If I did something and had no results, I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't do it anymore. No, nope. especially if somebody said I could have results, I'm not going to accept anything less. But listen to me, listen, this world is so corrupted that it has to parted something to us. Things we can't even see. We can't see it. Right? Things that we have been doing and we don't know we've been doing them. Things that have corrupted the heavenly way. The 
I'll tell you guys this story. This, story. this place you live in, the earth, was perfect. It was perfect. It was perfect. Darkness. Darkness desired this place. Darkness is chaos. Darkness is the absence of order. Darkness is the absence of light. Darkness is a twisted, perverted type of substance where everything, everything gets grind up. It gets, just gets mushed together. And it becomes everything all at one time. But it's actually nothing at all. Darkness loves to overtake. Darkness wanted this place to corrupt away. A way that was good. And it succeeded. But only for a season. Correction came. And darkness was squeezed. And was desperate to attempt to get a foothold in this world. And to get a foothold is to have darkness live within vessels. Just like you and I. Imagine that. Imagine a vessel that new light dwells in. Just darkness. That happened. Animals as well. And a flood came. It destroyed the majority of those vessels that were full of darkness. Instructions were given to those who sought the light to get rid of the last strongholds of darkness, though it was promised. Darkness would still be stagnant in the world and even seem to get a foothold again. But this time, a separation took place. Instead of darkness consuming everything, Vessels were given the power to reject darkness, that no darkness could enter into them. Thus, darkness could not occupy all places of the earth. Darkness found out its end was coming. So did everything else. To the creator of this world empowered soul to evoke authorities and to live by the light, right? The power of the light in this earth to repel darkness wherever it is. Darkness knew this and it sought to pervert the teachings, to embed itself, to corrupt it, to cause people to believe that light has no power. To cause people to believe that the only security is a tangible security. And it dwelt with vessels, many vessels on the earth, until a declaration came. Until a final sacrifice came. And when that final sacrifice came, all that was corrupted now had an opportunity to purge all darkness and to become vessels of purity again. And to be even sealed from that same darkness. Darkness understood this, but it desires this world. See, one thing about darkness, it desires everything it is not. Darkness desires everything it is not. Satan does not desire evil people. Because evil people are full of darkness. Satan desires what he does not have. A rebellious child will always attempt to obtain what they cannot have. If you tell a child, you cannot have those cookies, that's exactly what the, the focal point is going to be on. The cookies that they can't have. Teenagers, right, they know that certain things are taboo, forbidden. And it's the very thing that stays on their mind. We all know this, don't we? Where's that come from? You know who? 
That darkness has a name. It's called the dragon. And within that dragon is our elements, like the three unclean spirits, like Satan, Beelzebub, Apollyon, Simyaza, Benakiho. All these different names are in there, right? What do they desire? They desire to take this world. Why do they want this world so much? Because this is the place. This is the place of the creation. The children of the Most High. Satan came here. Did you know in the Bible, there's a curious scripture in the Bible. If you guys, I'm going to read it to you. Maybe you never saw it before. I think it's important now. I'm going off the rails tonight, just in case you don't have to go off the rails. We're under a global uh, uh, warning here. But let me go off the rails here real quick so you guys get this. In the book of Revelation, I'm going to read something to you. I want you guys to give me your honest opinion. I want you to think about it. Tonight's going to be a bit different. I need your interactions. I want to know what you think. I want to know exactly what you think. Listen to this. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God. Now listen, let me pause. Revelation 12, 10. Listen at the language. Please listen closely. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Here it comes. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Listen to all that together. Now, right, what does now mean? Right now at this moment. Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Now in comparison to what? See, when somebody says, right now, now it has come. Then that means prior to that time it did not come. Correct? It means prior to that time it wasn't there. What wasn't there? Salvation was not there. When was salvation not here? Hmm? When did the time of salvation come? Can anybody tell me that? When did the time of salvation come? Huh? The prophets spoke about it. Oh, yes, they did. The prophets said it was coming. The prophets said it was coming. The prophets could not enter into that place. And in Revelation it says, now is come salvation. What time was that? When was that? Listen, here's the giveaway. Now has come salvation, comma, because it's not by itself. Salvation was never by itself. Now has come salvation and what? Strength. And strength. Oh, that's not by itself. Now has come salvation and strength and what else? And the kingdom of our God. See, these are all coming together. Now is come salvation. Now is come strength. Now is come the kingdom of our God. What else? And the power of his Christ. Oh, see, they all come together. And if the declaration at this time was now, they're saying right at this moment this came. It wasn't here before. The power of Christ was not here before Christ because men did not know his name to call upon him. No one knew the name of Jesus. No one could call upon the name of the Lord because they were not given a name. They operated by descriptions of the Lord. You were given a name. You were given a name by which you can evoke 
They were not. They were not. Prophets had to be called and anointed by the living God and given power by the living God. And they evoked that power. Nobody else did. Nobody else did what Moses did. Nobody else did what Aaron did. Nobody else except those who were called. But, but, when salvation came, everything changed. When strength came, everything changed. When the kingdom of God came, everything changed. When the power of Christ came, everything changed. Do you see that? It changed. When Jesus got here, it came. You know what? In fact, in Acts chapter 2, what was said to the disciples at the time? Huh? What was said to them? Do not depart out of Jerusalem until that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you will receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So they didn't have power. Prior to the Holy Spirit, all that was encapsulated in Christ. Did you read Acts chapter 2? Did you guys read the book of Acts? Did you see that in the book of Acts? Let me read it to you real quick in the book of Acts. Forgive me for jumping all over the place. I'm going to read this to you. We're going to get down to the brass tacks here. Listen to me. I'm going to read it to you. Acts. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask you. Acts chapter 2. Listen, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Oh, something was happening. Something was happening. Wait a minute. Something was happening. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let me stop there because now I've got to back up. They received something. You see that? They received it. It just popped in there. They received it. Now let me read this to you. You ready? Ready? Acts. This is 1. Acts chapter 1. Verse 4, being assembled together with him, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, without this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Wait a minute. What, what did he just say? It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. What, what do they want to know? Hey, is this when you're going to set up, you know, the new Jerusalem? He didn't tell them. No. There's not going to be that. You know what he told him? He told him that was reserved for the living God in his own timing. That was not for mankind to even know that. How do I know that? He said it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Boy, that answers a few questions. Let me continue. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Isn't that awesome? Do you not know it's the first time Jesus said, he declared to them they would receive power at this time, not listen, they didn't, why didn't they have power before? I thought, I thought they had power before. 
Did they have power before this happened? No, they did not. They were operating by what? By the authority of Christ. They were operating by his word in the earth. Oh, you don't, you, you don't get that one. Let, let me tell you what happened. They were operating by the authority of Christ because he charged them to do exactly what he said. And if they obeyed, it was by his power, it was done. But Jesus was crucified at this time. Oh, he was gone. He was crucified. Listen, because right after he said this, it says, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received them out of their sight. He was gone. He was gone. They were powerless. But he said, do not depart out of Jerusalem until that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, because at that time, then they would receive power. Wait a minute, we just read something in the book of Revelation, speaking about a specific time. Did we? Did we just stop reading Revelation that 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 uh, uh, a dead giveaway dealing with time? Hmm? Down has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. But when is that time? Now has come salvation. That's when Jesus was here. Come on now, stay with me. That's when the Lord was here. The Lord just gave us a timing. When he gave them when that power came to them. Now, wait a minute. Where did where, where, where that come from? That was by the Holy Spirit. So surely this was a pretty big thing. It had to be prophesied that this would happen. Something that the prophets of old talked about. Oh, they sure did. Oh, they did. Oh, they did. Listen to this. This is Acts chapter 2. We read to the part where it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Listen, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, devout men, and of every nation under heaven. Now when this was, uh, listen, when this was noised or told abroad, they were talking about it, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own language, not gibberish, but in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, not all these which spake Galileans, aren't these the Galileans? They were amazed. Why? Educated people did not come from that place. Right? It says, it continues in verse 8, And how <clears throat> hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? So out of all the Middle East, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea and Capsidea and Pontus and Asia and all these different places, each person heard, heard, they heard the wonderful works of God in their own native tongue from uneducated men. Arabians, Cretes, all of them heard it. Nothing lacking. My goodness. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? They were just, they were, they were gone with the wind, lost in the sauce. They said, What in the world is this? How can we hear them speak in all of our languages? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. These men are drunk. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these men are not drunken, as ye suppose, saying it is about the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Uh-oh. It was spoken by the prophet Joel. We have a fulfillment. 
what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Here it is, Acts chapter 217. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. It didn't say they might. It said they shall prophesy. I want you to highlight that. They shall prophesy. That is not a might. That's not a maybe. They shall prophesy. Listen. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Signs. Signs. In the earth above or beneath. Wonders in the heavens above. We see those every single day now. We hear about those all the time. They did not have an announcement system like we have today. You see solar flares, CMEs, don't you? You see auroras. From any part of the world, all you have to do is access the Internet. You are the ones who identify What's above and what's happening in the earth? Let's continue to read. And it shall come to pass that whatsoever. Oh, it says, wait a minute, verse 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great notable day of the Lord come. Before, not after, before. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's talking about the days that started back then. They started back then. Now listen, I want you to, you guys got to listen to this first of all, because somehow you got to get Acts chapter 2. With all these declarative statements, these are not maybes. These are not maybes. When your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. There was no mistake in this either. None. Let me, let me take a sidestep real quick because somebody, somebody didn't relate this correctly. You may be out there right now. I, I don't think that happened to me. Yes, it did. Oh, sure it did. See, God said he would pour out of his spirit upon all flesh, not some flesh. All of it. All of it. Listen to me. He said, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, not some all. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. You know how when a little kid is walking through the house and they tell you something eerie, something they shouldn't even know. But they say it anyway, don't they? Huh? You hear those stories all the time. What about the times when you said something and it came to pass and you have no idea where it came from? You just knew it at that moment. You uttered that thing, and it came to pass. Sometimes nobody will pay attention to it, but you know you did it. You called it out, didn't you? Huh? You called it out, and it took place. You knew it. Somehow you knew it. Because that power is already upon the earth right now. This has taken place and is taking place. Don't you take note of that? These are declarative statements. When somebody says, you shall prophesy, hmm? that means you will. Being a prophet, he's speaking what thou saith the Lord. And the Lord God said, you shall prophesy. That's why you can say certain things. And without your own, without even knowing what you have fully said, that thing will come to pass. Normally people do this and they don't pay attention until it comes to pass. And you can't make heads or tails because you're not going to say I define this from my own wisdom. Nope. didn't happen that way. It just comes and it hits you. That's when you're young. That's throughout your life. When you get older, the dreams begin. The dreams begin. See, many of you had an experience, too. You didn't tell anybody, but you saw some things. You don't know what to call it, but you saw some things. And it was prophetic in nature. The Lord was showing you. 
what would come to pass, what would happen. Nobody wants to remember that stuff. It messes with your life. You try to get back to your life as normal. But the truth is, before you got into the Word of God, God showed you something when you were young. Your old men shall dream dreams. They shall. Do you know that God seals instructions in the depth of a dream past the pride of the mind, the foolishness of the mind? He will sow instructions within you so deep. Do you not know a dream can change or alter the course of your life? And when you're older, mature, with wisdom, you consider what you see. And that's something. A young person really does not consider what they see in a dream. Because they're full of desires of the world and overtones are too tough. But when you get older, dreams will change the course of your life. You know how sometimes you dream something and, and, and you didn't tell anybody and that thing came to pass. And somehow... It came to pass, but you didn't tell anybody. Did you notice some wickedness would try to enter into you? To try to yell at the next time so that you get the credit for knowing it before it ever happened? Have you ever noticed something is trying to take advantage of that? Somebody says, Mike, I'm not very old. And I consider what I see in a dream. Yep, I was 10 years old when that happened to me. Everybody's different. To me, dreams are plagues. I don't enjoy them. I do not. Anyway, everybody's different. But the fact is, all of us are witnesses to this in some way, form, or fashion. Also, back to the book of Revelation. We can establish something now, that this time, this, this specific time, when salvation came, when strength came, when the kingdom of God came, and the power of his Christ came, that was 2,000 plus years ago. Listen, I'm going to read this Revelation uh, uh, 12.10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Do you guys not know in, 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 the, in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, do you know what happened to Satan? Because Jesus said, now the prince of this world is cast out, is to be cast out. That was a Greek though, wasn't it? Remember what he said, now the prince of the world cometh and he has nothing in me. It was time for him to get cast out. Cast out of what? Cast out of heaven. Satan was cast out when Jesus went to the cross. I could stop until I end up down in this, below this uh, uh, dirt. Why would Satan be cast out when Jesus prevailed? Because I'll tell you something, Satan cannot accuse in the presence of a sacrifice. You, nobody can accuse in the presence of a sacrifice. It is null and void. So he has no placement at the throne of God. This, this, these are not the days of Job. You know that psalm that says, these are, like, these are the days of Job? No, they're not. No, they're not. Because Job did not have Jesus of Nazareth. And we do. Job was making sacrifices for his children. We don't do that. Jesus was the last sacrifice. The perfect sacrifice. Satan has no placement. Because you cannot accuse a soul where Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. He is the last sacrifice. So his accusations God will not hear because of Christ. He can accuse you all day so long as Christ is there. His words won't even come out. You can't accuse anybody of anything so long as the sacrifice is right there. Let me come now. 
Listen. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So if he's not at the throne, let's continue to read. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, yes. Did you not know because of Christ? That's you were overcoming Satan by what Jesus did. Not by what you did or anybody else, but by what Jesus did. Because he was the perfect sacrifice. Because he was the last sacrifice. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. You know, there's a mechanism within all of you. You may get scared at certain things. You may. But there's a spiritual Rambo in you. It really is. Sometimes it comes forward. You know, there's sometimes you don't know where that comes from. But see, the Lord gives us a valuable, a valuable indicator. Man cannot speak something that is not within him. You ever get charged up behind the word of God? Extremely sincere. And in your moment, at that moment of time, you declare something almost every single time. You say, Lord, no matter what, no matter what comes. And in that moment, when you're saying no matter what comes, I'm not going to deny you. In that moment, do you not know you you wouldn't even allow death to get in your way? In that moment. Now, you cannot speak something that's not within you. It has to be within you to speak it. And you're quite serious in those moments when you make that declaration. It's no secret that the flesh is the weak part of us. But there's something inside of incredible strength and resolve. And death will not deter it. It won't. So from time to time, you get a sneak peek into who you really are. Because in those moments, death is no deterrence. It is not. Therefore, it says, Rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Now, let me pause here. Let me pause here. Did you guys hear what I just read in verse 10? It said this. It said this. Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Okay, so he accused them. The, the word them, right, is covering more than one person. Satan accused them. But they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, right? Now, let me continue to read. Get to, listen very carefully. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Oh, Stop. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Why weren't the heavens rejoicing prior to that time? Hmm? Why? The accuser of the brethren is cast down, who accused them before our God day and night. And he's saying rejoice in the heavens? Because the accuser of the brethren is cast down. Rejoice in the heavens. Let me continue. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. You know, 
I say, it's amazing to me how these words, they tell you everything you need to know that men are trying to hide. Everything. It's all disclosed right here. But let me redirect your focal point. Satan is cast out of the heavens. When? When was he cast out of the heavens when salvation came? When the strength and the kingdom of our God had come? And the power of Christ had come? We know that came 2,000 plus years ago. Satan is kaput out of the heavens. He's not there anymore. Where is he at? Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For Satan has come to you. He's come down to us. He's here. He's here. How is he here? He does the same thing every single time. But he's here. He knows he has but a short time. It says, it says, and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth a man-child. We know that is Israel who brought forth a man-child. And the serpent cast out of his mouth, listen, and it says, and the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. In her place, where she is nourished for time, times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. This matches. Here's what's so awesome. Do you guys know what this, what this is? She's nourished for time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. It's this consistent date or, or day interval value, right? The same value. Because as Israel is no longer in Israel, speaking of the whole of these people who fled into the wilderness, as she is there nourished, something else is happening to the main grounds. No wonder Jesus said, those in Judea flee into the mountains. Don't go down to take anything out of your house. Run. It's the only time Jesus said, run. Right Now, we know the devil, or we know that Jerusalem is going to be trampled underfoot how, how long? 42 months? Three and a half years. And here we have here this value. Jesus says, flee into the wilderness when you see the abomination of desolation. Daniel says, when they place the abomination that make it desolate, that they'll take over everything there. Right? The folks that are doing what they're doing right now. The folks that people believe have no power right now. The folks Israel just fired on. They're going to do it. Three and a half years, they will take Israel for three and a half years. And God told them to flee into Judea. So we know that in truth, that time begins when they set up the abomination of desolation. We need not speculate. But those who listen to the Most High will flee during that time. They'll flee. But they're going to be helped. Those who flee are going to be helped. That, that, that's very consistent in the book of Daniel, too. They're going to be helped. The Lord is awesome. And it says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. What is the Old Testament telling you about the flood? Huh? When Satan comes at you like a what? A flood. The Lord's going to raise up a standard against him. What is a flood? Water. In Revelation, through and through, right, there, there are several cases. Water represents what? You ready? Water represents the many people, tongues, and languages of the sir. So Satan duped. Many people on the earth to go after her. No wonder they hate Israel. No wonder they hate the Jews. It's darkness that hates. God does not put that attribute in anybody. He does not put it in you nor in me to hate another human being. Not since Christ. So who's putting all this hatred and coming up with all these messages of aggression and hate to sow these seeds of hate in people. 
Satan is doing that. He's doing it. He does it, and if the person is weak enough, meaning they're not filled by something holy, that it would repel the devil, they fall for it. They fall for the explanation of hatred. And they end up becoming a vessel of hatred. See how that works? So Satan is using people, and like a flood, through a multitude of different types of people, he's gone after Israel. Hmm? What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? Everybody's going to be drawn down to what? To the Valley of Josephat. All nations are going to be against two, Israel. That's what it says. So now you know, now you know that this flood is the whole world coming against Israel. Just what the Lord told us. When you see Jerusalem encamped about by her enemies. Look up and lift up your head. It didn't say for your redemption is there on that day. It said it draws nigh. It's coming closer. Because that is one essential step of fulfillment. Right? Of God's prophecies. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of her mouth. Now, what is that all about? The earth opened up and swallowed up the flood. You know what that means? If you look up that phrase, you're going to find out that whenever the earth opens up, especially during the Roman, you know, when the Rome was fighting everybody and subduing everybody, the earth were these natural things that would consume mankind. That's when the earth helped the woman. So, in fact, the earth helped too. The cause of Israel, how? It wasn't very conducive to the free movements of mankind in doing what they wanted to do, just like now. Great earthquakes, volcanism, floods, is causing people to change plans. I'm telling you, it's causing people. That, that earthquake in Turkey. Do you not know that the entire battle plan for the Middle East was altered that day? Well, everybody else is blaming everything on everything else, right? You've, there are battle plans that cannot take place now because certain avenues have been totally cut off, and they are still impassable today. God is serious about fulfillment of this, very serious about this fulfillment. You guys still with me so far? And the dragon was wroth with a woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, that's you. Those are the folks, the remnant of her seed are the folks. Remain, they continue to remain. The remnant of his friend. Right? The remnant of her seed, listen, which keep the commandments of God. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, there's only one way to keep the commandments of God. That is to keep the commandments of Christ. Because if you keep the commandments of Christ as Jesus commanded, you are a keeper of God's commandments. I think it's awesome, by the way. So this time, this time, when did this happen? When was Satan, when did darkness come down to this earth? Look around and see what you've been up against. Look around. Now you know why. Your mail is supernaturally timed to those arguments and fallouts of people and relationships in your life. They all seemingly happen at once. You know how people say, well, you know, death comes in threes. Well, you might want to look around and see what you're dealing with. You're just very sensitive when somebody passes away. Very, you start looking, you start noticing. You're very sensitive, right? When nobody you know passes away, you're not very sensitive in that area. Do you all see this? Do you see the darkness in the earth now? Darkness is not coming. When 
when salvation came, when the kingdom of God was coming, and Jesus sat on the right hand of the Father, there was no placement for Satan. He, all of his fallen, were here. They're here. What do you think people are being contending with? What do you think these kingdoms really are? God gave us a hint. Anything he initializes stays anointed. Anything anointed has God's results. When it's anointed, the results of the living God are in it. Jesus said you'll know a tree by its fruit. He never said you'll know a tree by its leaf. You'll know a tree by its roots. No, he said by the fruit. What is the fruit of a tree? It is the yield of a tree. And what has been yielded from these earthly kingdoms? Come on, somebody tell me. Iniquity. Giving freedom. Giving things. Giving a seat at the table to things that should never have a seat. Backwards thinking. How do you start a country, America, based on the Ten Commandments, and yet you invite a paganistic religion in to change and alter your foundation. How does that happen? See, the people in this kingdom are making you do what God said don't do. God said you're not fighting flesh and blood. But these elements of the world would have you mad at your neighbors. Stop doing that and have an understanding of this. Darkness will use any and everybody, not covered by the blood of the Lamb. Remember something, you overcome Satan and his minions by the blood of the Lamb. Now, the blood of the Lamb is something God did for us through his Son, Jesus Christ. So darkness is overcome for us, specifically by him. We didn't do it. We're running around free, venturing in and out of different things, not dying. Doing a dark thing here and a dark thing there, not dying. Because we are, we have in fact become immune to what darkness can do because of the blood of the Lamb. Which is why we have billions and billions of chances. Let's not take that for granted. That is grace multiplied, isn't it? Because those who are not covered are fully overcome by it. To the point where they can no longer see holiness. There's a name for that too. That process. It's mentioned in Thessalonians. You guys still with me? You haven't fallen asleep. We're about to get somewhere on this. Just have to lay the foundation. So this earth is truly dark. What do you say? I mean truly dark. Truly dark. Because the fruit being yielded in this day and age is highly iniquitous. What God did to us allows us to yield perfect fruit. Perfect fruit. Some people don't bring fruit to perfection tenfold, a hundredfold. Why? Because they allow the cares of this life the riches of this world, and a host of other things to rob them of the seed that God planted within them. Specifically speaking of the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a lesson on that. The ways the word can be snuffed out of your life. Darkness has been here. Things I'm set up right now. Right now. How many of you were nervous when Israel attacked Iran and just stopped? How many got nervous? How many of you know about what Putin has made? Putin made several declarations. But when a bill was passed to fund Ukraine, he was angered. Oh, he was angry. And how many of you think that Israel, right, that Israel, I, I heard people, when Iran first 
attacked Israel. I heard people speak in great error. You know what they said? Oh, we, we can intercept anything Iran has. How foolish and prideful are we? Those who know, they know exactly what Iran used and what they did not use when I come back. I have something to tell you about Iran because you're about to see it, unfortunately. I'll be back in a few minutes right here at COT, everybody. Okay, everybody. Let's get back to it. All right. You know, I had no idea. I've been talking a long time. I talk too much. Anyway, you guys saw the attack of Israel against uh, Iran, correct? You guys saw that. And you saw the response of Iran against Israel, correct? Let me ask you something. Why do you think, why do you think Israel didn't finish the job? And why do you think uh, when, 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 they, when they intercepted that first batch of rockets and drones, right? What do you think it was so successful? They, they bragged. They said, we hit 95% of those inbound targets, right? Okay, sober time. Do you not know that Iran did not use any of its modern equipment? The drones, because you can tell, most of that stuff you could tell by the speed and the travel duration of multiple objects, they were using antiquated drones, the, the noisy drones. I mean, the old ones. They were utilizing the older missile systems. They did not use not one modern weapon. That tactic is straight from Russia. You guys do know that Iran has hypersonics. You're not going to intercept hypersonics. I'm sorry, you're not going to do it. Why do you think the USA, at the beginning of this year, it was vital that the USA and Israel, together, jointly, began to work on a laser system. That's the only thing that can stop hypersonics. And it is only partially okay so so back to what i was saying forgive that interruption back to what i was saying iran didn't use anything modern that they have and listen to me their stockpile their stockpile is not a joke do you not know they can hit us in the usa from iran i hope you know that I really do hope you know that. I hope you really understand that NATO, the whole of NATO, all Western forces, right? They have an understanding of what's actually at stake. Some people were writing, asking a question. You know, what was all that, uh, what was all that language about, about the, uh, what was it the night before that attack? There were lots, lots of radio chatter, right? Lots of radio chatter with a specific call sign, which was, in fact, which was, in fact, part of the alert level target package transfer control uh, responses, initiations, right? Code words for different things that were used that night, but they were all of the same the same type of package. But then the day of the attack, I believe it was the, what was that, the, 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 right, the day of that attack, when Israel actually uh, attacked Iran, you heard nothing. You didn't hear a thing, right? Prior to that time, you guys heard one word. You guys that were combing the radio, 
you heard Skymaster over and over and over and over and over again. And that's a EAM of a specific type, right? That's almost like a, as a packet transfer that begins your nuclear language. Bombers. Those are bombers, right? Those are bombers receiving and sending packages. That's what they are, bombers. I know a lot of people, they don't really comprehend how that works when you're, when you're messing around with nuclear codes, but rest assured, nobody's going to accidentally, you know, fire off some nuclear missile uh, at anybody else uh, without, without the proper authent, so, uh, or authentication. So they kept authenticating, right? They kept sending and authenticating and sending and authenticating, and it was in the air, it was open air. So obviously they wanted the enemy to know that they were ready. Is what they were doing. But why would anybody do that? Why in the world would a person, would an army, right? Why would one nation's forces want another nation's forces know that we're nuclear capable and ready? Why would anybody ever do that? Why would they even use that term? Sky master? With all those data packets, why? I'll tell you why. Two things were accomplished. They wanted Iran to know that we're ready. But we're not going all out in this. But we can if you want to. Because right after Sky Master, if, if, if there's, if Sky King is used, you, you probably won't hear that. You didn't hear that. Sky King is a black word, right? It's a black word. And a black word that is, um, that means you're, you're, you're hundred percent committed. And those, those authentication codes that come that time are for release, right? <clears throat> they wanted the enemy to know, here's why. They needed Iran to know that we were utilizing. We were ready, but we're not going to initialize any type maximum force. Why would you ever want a country to know that? I'll tell you why. Because Iran has the capability to wipe out the whole of the Middle East. I'm sorry people fall for the okie doke. And when you guys remember during the Obama years, you kept hearing, well, in another 30 days, Iran's going to be, they're, they're going to have a breakout moment. They're going to be nuclear capable. Well, in two more months, they're going to be able to launch an ICBM. You heard that for a year, two years. Two years you heard that. This means you don't have a breakout in a couple of months. You, you continue to say something for two years. Right? That they're going to be nuclear capable. But you do nothing about it. And every time they came on television, a debate or something like that, it was always, you know, 30 more days, 60 more days. According to them, Iran broke out 194 times because they kept saying, you know, 30 days, you know, 10 days. The truth is, you don't hit a nuclear power. You don't hit any nation who has hypersonics with questionable warheads. You don't hit anybody like that with anything unless you give them warning. Because when they can wipe you out, that means the tables have turned. That was an actual courtesy. It was a courtesy for us to let them know, hey, we, listen, we're, we're operating by response here. We're not, Biden had released that notice to tell the world we're not initializing anything. So don't you initialize on that front. Use minimal force. They, they kept saying that. What did Iran do? They broke out the rusty weapons. And they utilized rusty weapons to attack Israel. Not one of those weapons was of their main arsenal. Iran has hardened facilities deep in the ground that nobody can hit. Nobody can hit that. It is packed full of hypersonics, full of ICBM type vehicles that can carry their Active warheads. 
if you were listening closely, if you guys were listening since 2012, you understand that Iran is nuclear capable. They don't have backwater uh, technology. You would have an understanding of that, which is why they speak the way they do. You don't speak like a madman unless you can back it up. Nobody has attacked Iran. Why? We attacked everywhere else. Why, of all places, did we never hit Russia? We never hit Iran. Why? We would always give them a courtesy before we attacked anything. That's a tit-for-tat movement. That means you do this to us, we're going to, in proportion to what you did, do something back. Nobody escalated anything by utilizing powerful weapons. Everything was held back. What you saw, what you saw was nothing more than a power exchange, a probing of sorts. That's all you saw. And people who don't know that, there are a lot of people who don't know that. They don't know Iran's true power. They don't know that Iran could wipe us out and wipe the, the, the whole of the Middle East out. They don't know that. And so they say what they say without the knowledge of knowing. See, because when they find out, it's going to be too late. It's coming. You better believe it. This Bible tells us it's coming. You better believe it. Well, I'll take it back. You don't have to believe it. Keep living. But they absolutely have the technology to get at us. And they have stockpiles, numbers of drones that fly so fast and carry some pretty heavy ordnance and can maneuver like a sparrow in the sky. These are big. These don't have propellers. These are huge. Not the noise makers. They sent last time, anybody can hear one. You could have shot one of those drones out of the sky with a BB gun. That's how slow it is. So the interceptions that were made, nothing to brag about. Iran, in coordination with Russia, in coordination with North Korea, would be utilized somewhat quickly and the world's not ready for that. They can change the entire northern hemisphere forever. You guys know that, right? We're talking about Iran. That's what we're talking about. I want you guys to know that so you don't fall for the tricks so that you're not so shaken but it actually happened. You can't operate. They let that cat out of the bag during the campaign years. They did. And here we are today. You guys should know that uh, a secondary bombardment will take place soon. You guys should know that. This secondary bombardment is going to be quite, uh, quite devastating. There are no winners. You start utilizing weapons of a specific yield. There are no winners. But here we are. Here we are. Now, I'm going to ask you guys something. If you don't mind, how many of you thought Iran was, you know, how many of you thought Iran was somewhat underpowered? Right? You thought they were underpowered. You thought they didn't have or don't have the capability to totally wipe Israel off the face of the earth. They have that power. But how many of you thought they did not have that power? It's a shame, really. It was only by pride could a person miss that. Right? Be ready for that. Be ready for prophecy to absolutely come to pass. 
please be ready for that. Now, how many of you think you, well, you're not supposed to see any of this? How many of you honestly believe that? You honestly believe you're not supposed to see any of this. You believe, because I heard someone talking just this week, and they believe, right? Here's what they said. They said, they were talking about the seven years of tribulation. You guys know where that came from, right? Do you guys know where that came from? But you heard about that. You also heard that, and I heard it. This guy said that God will come and get his people prior to any of the heavy things happening. That's what he said. And he said, that is the rapture. Here's my problem with that. Ready? It's not scripture. It's not scripture. See, because I want you guys to back off time for a second. I know we're in 2024. Back up a little bit. I want you to look all the way back to the 1900s. And look at the conflict that we have had in these lands. And look at the world. It was almost totally decimated. Nobody went anywhere. Look at the plagues that took place. And there was hardly anybody else around. And everybody stayed right here. See, I, I'm telling you this to let you know something. God gave us a procedure, so to speak, of his coming. All we have to do is trust that and not make up our own narrative trying to make something work. What would happen if somebody made a model uh, rapture vehicle? It really went away. It wouldn't help you any, would it? Hmm? And what about the people in World War II who had lots of grievances? They went through a real tough time. And they did not have the gear to stay out there that long. You gotta be careful, is all I'm saying. Because when you get your hopes up, right, and you start listening to someone who set a date, and we just read that it is not for man to know those times that God has reserved for himself. You just read that. Look at the time here, we're quick. Oh, we're doing pretty good. So anyway, listen, Iran has that capability. Please understand that. Please. Because right now, right now, there's confirmation of movements taking place in Iran and Israel and Russia and North Korea and China. Do you guys know that? Now, what did the Lord say? What did the Lord say? That he would give this last time kingdom, dark kingdom, power. He would. He's the only reason it can stay. Please remember that. Don't forget that. Please don't. Some people have. They really have. So let me ask you this. When it comes to the rapture, how many of you, honestly, are you're, you're frightened? You're frightened of war, of what could potentially happen? Or, let's say, you never really looked into it yourself. How many of you are like that, that you haven't really looked into it yourselves? No, somebody. Oh, somebody says, don't know. At the last Trump, yes. The last Trump. Do you guys think that uh, having a person in Trump and Pence was some sort of a uh, coincidental fluke of, you know, some, in the selection process? I wonder. I just wonder. Somebody says a little, a little. No fear. When people, the Lord will definitely show up to get his people, those who are left alive, 
right? Those who are still alive at the time when God sends them, they'll still get those people who are left here. But before that time, do you guys understand that the Antichrist is going to be revealed? Do you guys know that? He's going to be revealed. Oh, my goodness, I need some water. Guys, will you forgive me for a second? I, got, I forgot my water. I did. I did. I don't want my lips starting to stick together. The words are already, they're not going to come out right. right? Plus, I'm on my feet here. My goodness. Can't sit down. You know why? Because I start thinking about this Iran-Israel situation. And cooler heads need to prevail. But that will only happen by prayer. That will happen by prayer only. And I know it's only a matter of time. The, the, before the rest of the nuclear proliferation deal falls apart, you guys do understand that pieces of it no longer exist. It has been broken. Do you not know that Russia broke their agreement? There'll be a lot more than that. A lot of people are not aware of that uh, technology, of what they were, people are actually doing right now. They have no idea. They, don't. they have no idea. They have no idea that people are being fitted to these things. People who look exactly alike. They are going to operate based upon whatever they get. That stuff's going to multiply in the earth. It will. It'll multiply in these dark kingdoms. Dispatch folks will be all over the place. They're soon to take over. Our government, by the way, in this hour, it's, even, it's in worse condition right now than it was this morning. It is so deeply fractured, right? But there is a candidate, nobody is talking about, that could still surface. Just remember ears. So you have to do ears. And you'll know what that. Now, but don't say uh, what that candidate is. What, what I'm telling you is this. You get a lot of people who they just want somebody new. They do. And if we go in a certain, a, a certain combat situation, um, we're going to have to do the unthinkable. But will, will that be done in 2024? But this desperate stuff they're doing, part of the war breakout in 2024? Will Iran finally flex what it has to break down the rest of this treaty and begin to use some of those nuclear armaments? That is such a high probability. I do know that that proliferation act is about to be dead. I do know that they have already reneged on it a couple of times. Right? So it should be null and void. The USA still honors it. Right? But even we have said that in the event of war, what we're going to do, right? We have already had that uh, put out to what people are going to they're going to do. Same. They're, they're ready for the whole pace of the planet to change. They're propping it up like everything is normal. But you rest assured, prophecy will be prophecy. It's going to come out just like prophecy said it is. It will. It most certainly will. All right, folks, I'm going to get my water. I'm going to be right back. What time is it? It is it's still, well, halfway down the mark. When I come back, I'll be right back. I'm going to cover something that, uh, well, I want to buckle up one more time. Because I believe the warnings went out, but and then the, the certain launch vehicles have been driven out to be set up tonight. Will we have another conditional? Well, I hope it's conditional. Some sort of conditional response tonight. Tonight. The 
USA is not going to have the same, listen, they're not going to have the same uh, courtesy they had last time. They won't. They won't do that. Anyhow, I'll see when I get back. I'll be right back. I'm going to get some water. It'll take me about two minutes to get this water. i, I got to get some water. I do. I need to get some water, guys. I'll be right back in a few minutes right here at COT. Okay, everybody, I'm back. And no longer parched. All right, folks. You have it. Iran is still deadly. Now, second thing is this. You guys know prophecy is coming about. Right? How can I put this? There are two conflicts. Those of you in the USA have to be watchful of. You must ensure you're not part of it. There's no way God called any of us, right, to become a part of the violence you're about to see. And the cause that's behind the, that violence is going to seal people into damnation only. It is, in fact, a breakout that will happen within our country, the USA, but will also happen in the UK and in Germany. Germany is going to have theirs pretty close. Even the Vatican is not immune from this. They're not. It will happen. You see, as of late, Lots of contacts, people talking to each other. Lots of that has happened. Unfortunately, in the USA, we have more than most. Well, we almost have as many as the UK and Germany. Almost. N not quite that much, but almost. It is becoming a known issue that they're waiting on a key moment to synchronize attacks against us. It should be no secret to any of you that we're at a heightened alert right now. Right now. And not only do we have a heightened alert against foreign entities who have already embedded themselves in the lands, but we also have a domestic issue happening right now. So long as things continue the way they are in the USA, people are going to become more polarized. Now more. Now more. More than before. Many have gotten to the point they don't care what actually happened. All they care about, right, is having a, a, a custom solution to what's happening in the world. And there's only one way they see it happening. This is going to result in lots of tensions in families, right? For example, in some of your families, some of you guys may be Democrats and Republicans in the same family. But if you take note, during the Obama years, the same thing happened. And people, there are a lot of people, if they voted for Obama, their parents disowned them. Or if they didn't vote right, for what uh, somebody wanted, they would go and try something against those people. Because we have breached uh, data. We have quite a few issues that have happened. My hope, my sincere hope, is that somehow we can get all of that out of control and you guys who are positioned with the Lord, it's your time to pray. It's your time to represent a better way, the Lord's way. It's also our time to accept that the Lord knows what he's talking about. I pray we can accept all those things and do. Really 
say to you. If we don't, it's not going to bode well for anybody. So I hope that uh, we keep ourselves under control. I hope that people are not uh, partaking in some of the ruthless actions folks are going to take in retaliation against those of the Islamic influence in our country, in Germany, and in the UK. Right? I really, really, really do pray that one. I do. I do. Nevertheless, this is where we are. So that little governmental civil war between Republicans and Democrats is about to grow beyond leaps and bounds. It is. People are going to become infuriated when they don't get what they want. That is uh, almost like a spirit of entitlement. Where we are not to operate by anything like that. But we are. We are. Now, wait a minute. You guys have any questions of me? Anybody? Anybody have any questions? This is your moment, by the way. This is your moment to step into what is real. To not make a fantasy of the Word of God, but to step into it. And to step into it. The people who fall away is because they never had the Holy Spirit to begin with. Well, re is a good question. So let me say this. At the very end, Jesus will say, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Never. Key word. If Jesus never knew them, right? And he already knows who he died for. If, he, if they have no position, no placement with him, what good are they? Folks, uh oh, somebody says, uh, who's that? I've always known that if there was ever to be a pre trib rapture, then I would get left behind. Sorry, I meant schizophrenia. Is it spiritual? I think schizophrenia is 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 more of a. I, I'd say part of it is right, but the other part is a response to those surrounding threats. A person with schizophrenia, right? They always accuse somebody of doing or saying something. Notice that word "accuse." Always. In uh, a very specific case, well, that's the way it is. The sleeping kings waking up. Well, in Revelation, there are a group of kings, but nobody can do anything about it. Because in the word it says, these kings have received no power as of yet, but will one hour with the beast. Well, if they've received no power as of yet, but are in fact going to exercise the powers of the beast, they are embedded in the system. It's just part of the system, civil servants or something of that nature. Right? Those ten kings are behind the scenes. They're likely, you know, who knows what they are. They could be a senator. They could be a, they could be a janitor. Who knows? But they're there. They're on site. They're in that vicinity. And we know that at some point, uh, at some point, people are going to be taken over and inhabited by a specific spirit, which leads me to this one thing. Many people are marked right now. Or possession is starting to take place more and more, guys. More and more. It happened again in two different states. It happened again. A 
person going from being one person for, I believe, almost 15 years, all of a sudden this person comes back and attempts to kill his own family. A, uh, a woman tried to kill her two children, one of seven, one of uh, three, I believe it was, to stop her from the impending invasion of the Democrats. Do you guys hear me? Do you hear me? Then a death was put on the Republicans. That person that set himself on fire. You know who they're going to investigate, right? Make no illusions about these things. You have very conniving, devilish things happening right now. They're going to try and pin this on Christianity, and people are going to hate Christians more than they do right now. All right, folks. Somebody says, uh, so, oh, okay, question, is it possible that we, let's see, that what we know as Israel is not where the Israelites lived? Well, think about something. Think about something. Think about the scripture. It's not about the Israelites. It's not what it's about. How, why would I say something like that? Because in the book of Joel, Right? You see something. In the book of Joel, you see where God looks down and he remembers his land and pities the people. That's what you see. That land, right, is what God promised. That land is full of artifacts, real ones. They find artifacts every single day. Every day. That's unheard of. It really is unheard of. Do you know when will the rent heifers be sacrificed in Israel? Well, I'll tell you what. They're setting everything up for, for that sacrifice. Right? I don't know exactly when. Right? If I did know, I couldn't say anything about it. Uh, nobody can for security reasons. But uh, because if anybody out there were to know of uh, specific plans or dates, the whole of the Middle East would not permit that to happen. They wouldn't. Do you not know that also the rebuilding of the temple, the sacrificing of the red heifers, is enough to turn the rest of the populace of the world against Jerusalem? Do you guys know that? You guys know that. Well, you know now, in just case you didn't. All right, folks. It's summer time again here. It is. It is the. It's my exit time. It is. Someone said, uh, "Let's see." Crash recovery found a calendar. Can you elaborate more about it, please? Crash recovery found a calendar on your machine. Somebody says, uh, the armies that Joshua smote, are they the armies of the aliens mentioned in Hebrews? Well, that, that uh, aliens in this case, right, will be foreigners. Um, I, I just can't subscribe to anybody from any other planet but that's the narrative. I believe that what men are tangling with is what we read about today. That the, the, the accuser of the brethren is cast down. Right? He and all his fallen angels are working underneath that, uh, that bubble of existence. Right? That's what I believe. Well, I do. Genesis 6 is very um, uh, descriptive. Very descriptive. It really is. We'll give that two days flashlight for a meeting, at my meeting. 
I should be back at the at the uh, COT COT by then. I need to be back there ASAP. Uh, when I get back there, we'll, we'll unravel some things. We'll not unravel. Put some things in motion. Actually, listen, because we're on a timeline. You know, the world is on a timeline. I hope that you guys really understand that Iran did not use any primary uh, armaments. They used all secondary has-been things. They're, they're, they're doing exactly what Putin does. Putin uses uh, old, antiquated, cheap materials and equipment to fight everybody with. He's not used his main arsenal. He's not. I don't believe uh, any of us would forget it if he did. I'm not going to hold you hostage. I'll let you guys go. If the player turns on later on, you guys know what that is. Okay? Um, I do have a pending eruption there. So hopefully 37 is in safekeeping because in his uh, area, there could be a, another massive issue. Massive issue. Folks, it's, listen, we're about to cover also, I want to tell you guys something. We're about to cover uh, in depth some pretty, um, a pretty hard subject to cover, period. Pretty hard. We're going to finish Revelation up in the next, I'll, I'll say about two or three days. That'll be done. We'll do a summary. We're going to do that every Friday with the Book of Enoch. A, a part of the summary that goes with the Book of uh, Revelation, but also the things that people are beginning to say, beginning to admit, beginning to come forward by. These people need help. Right? We're going to do our best. We're going to do our best for these folks. We're going to drag out the stops and describe some things, and uh, it will be what it is. But get ready for everything to escalate on every side. This is your hour of opportunity. It really is. That takes a foundation, a better foundation to actually speak of so that you understand my viewpoint in that. And some scripture to back up some things. Because the Bible is very specific in the time that we're in. It's very specific. But you may not know this. It's also quite specific on what you're able to do. All that comes with commitment. All of it does. Your commitment right now is everything. But you've got to hold on. You've got to make sure that you're not part of this violent movement. Right? Against your fellow man. Let no one turn you against your fellow man. That is wrong. Oops. I'm going to say God bless all of you. Be prepared for each other. Watch out for each other, please. It's possible that the humans are the temple for the Holy Spirit. We covered that, Watchman 88, a few times. A few times. Yeah, we covered that a few times. I believe prophecy unfolds uh, in two distinct ways, right? One is physical, one is spiritual. Every single time, every place you see prophecy, you're always going to see both the, the spiritual side of it and the physical side of it. In this case, you see the inside big time. You'll know it quite well. God bless you guys. I hope to see you guys next time right here at COT. If the player turns on at midnight, you guys know what it is. All right. God bless you guys. Lord, keep you always. We'll get to some more questions and everything else. Once I get back to the main station, I'll be better equipped to uh, tackle most of those with you guys. I do love questions. I do. I just don't want to overdo it tonight. I've been running on the... 
I'm running on fumes. I really have been. And keep in mind, there are more and more people attempting to commit suicide these days. Lord have mercy. I mean actual suicide. God bless you guys. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. God bless. You guys take care of each other. I'll see you next time.